Beloved, it is not only Palm Sunday, but it is also the first Sunday of the month. And typically when we gather on the first Sunday of the month, we join together at the table at faith and we receive communion together. In our current situation, we will not be sharing communion this Sunday. As Methodists, we believe deeply that part of what is special about how God acts in that moment is that we are gathered together as the gathered body of Christ. And we gather in our place and our time knowing that others have gathered too. And in our current circumstance, we cannot gather. It reminds me of the ways that our original Methodist forefathers and foremothers couldn't have communion unless there was a clergy person writing into their town, and that might only happen once a quarter. But I look forward to the time when we once again are able to gather. When we gather for communion, one of the things that we do is that we offer our prayers of confession. And so today, as we pray our intercessions, I'm also going to invite us to pray our confessions. Later this week, we'll have the opportunity to bless and share a love feast together, which is very different than communion, but it's still an opportunity to gather together and enjoy food together. We're going to do that virtually. So today, I would ask that we be intentional about our confessions and the way that we receive pardon. Let's gather our hearts in prayer. God, we're painfully aware that sometimes it is hard to say yes to you and no to the rest of the world. We're painfully aware that we do not always follow you with our whole heart. We recognize that sometimes we fail to be an obedient church. Sometimes we together fail your mission in the world and we fail your expectation that we love one another, and we fail your expectation that we be in deep relationship with you. Forgive us, we pray, and free us for joyful obedience. God, also in this season, we are aware of how scary and frightening it is to be sick. We're aware of how scary and frightening it is to have healthcare needs that may be put off or not met the same way because of those who are so very sick right now. We pray for health and wellness and wholeness, not just for those we love, but for the whole world. We pray for the healing power of Jesus to claim us and help us be whole and well. We pray for hearts that are broken and minds that are struggling with how all of this works. We pray for souls that hurt right now. We pray for people in places where there is no clean water, where there is no health care available. We pray for our brothers and sisters who are scared and alone. We pray for the sense of loss we feel about our own lives and the places where we're anxious, the places where maybe we don't know what this means for us in our jobs or in our finances or in our family life or in our education or in our church. Perhaps never before have we needed your ear so close to us when we pray as you taught us saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, hear the good news. Christ died while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Now, months ago, we were talking about how to pass the peace safely as a congregation to avoid passing on cold and flu. 
now we can't even wave at one another in the same room. But here's my challenge for you today. It is important that we share the peace of Christ with one another. I'm gonna invite you today to find time to pick up the phone and call someone and share the peace of Christ with that person. May the peace of Christ be with you. Amen.